Hey, what's up everybody? Jason here. Today I am going to show you recording with the Elisa Strike Pro kit. So I did do a video on this uh, a couple of years ago now, but I think I tried to cram too much into it and eh, I never thought it was a great video. I've been meaning to redo it and I finally now have the opportunity to get it done. So I'm going to show you only recording audio with the Strike Pro and I'm going to break out the MIDI part into another video. So for this one, the most important thing to know is how the output signals are processed from the strike module differently. So if you flip the module around, you get a left and right main output and you get individual outputs for the kick, snare, hi-hat and ride, and you get a left and right for the toms and a left and right for the cymbals. So the biggest difference between the two is that the line outs will process whatever kit effects you have set up and the volume levels of the pads will be determined based on the faders on the front of the strike module. The individual outputs will just send the raw sample. So I'm going to go through a few things in this video. One, how to set up your strike module, how to set up these three options in your DAW. So I'll show you a setup, assuming you have an audio interface with two inputs, an audio interface with four inputs, and an audio interface with eight or more inputs. So first, just to demonstrate the differences between the sound you're going to get out of the line outs versus the individual outs, here's just a quick example of I uh, hooked up the line output from the strike to channel one of my interface, and I hooked up the snare output to input number two on my audio interface. And you can hear how those are processed differently. All right, so now that you know how the outputs are processed differently in the sounds that come out of the line outs versus the individual outs, what type of audio interface do you have? So for example, I've got this old Roland Duo Capture EX. It just has two inputs. So I would have to use the line outputs and that means I would have to spend more time getting the settings in the module right. So with a two channel mixer, you'd have to set up the module for the exact sound, panning, volume levels and mix in the module itself. And then if you are using the individual outputs, you'll get a little bit more freedom. So for example, if you have a four channel interface, you could send all of the drums through the line outputs, except maybe the kick and snare. So you would turn the kick and snare volume on the mixer to nothing. So now only these drums will be processed through the line outs and the raw signal of the kick and snare will be processed through the individual outputs, giving you a little bit more freedom. If you have an audio interface that has eight inputs or more, you can use all of the individual outputs. And then again, if it's more than eight, you could combine the line outputs and the individual outputs. So you could maybe mimic room mics with your line outputs because it's going to process the kit effects. And if you imagine what room mics sound like for drums, normally you will hear more of the crashes. Uh, you might hear the toms a little bit less, the hi-hat and the ride maybe a little bit more, the kick not as much, and the snare a lot or a little. So you could kind of set these up to mimic what a room mic setup might sound like, and that includes going into the kit effects. So let's move on to setting those up. You get some options for adjusting the kit effects. You get reverb, EQ, compression, and two types of effects. So the reverb gives you some presets, EQ, you can just turn on or off, but you can adjust your low and high frequencies and then the gain for each one. Compression will give you some presets as far as color, but you can still adjust your threshold and your output. So the threshold is basically the level at which the compressor kicks in and the output is, are you increasing or decreasing the overall output signal? So one of the knocks against the strike module was that it's not loud enough. So even if you're not recording, you can go into your compression settings and you can increase the output volume and that will increase the volume. Effects one and two, so the effects are all the same, it just gives you the ability to add two different types. So depending on the effect that you have selected, you're gonna get different options. So if you go into the uh, delay here, you get options for adjusting the left and right and the feedback plus the overall level. And then the other ones, the flangers, the phasers, etc. you just normally will get rate, depth, feedback, and level. So make sure you set up your kit effects for exactly what you want if you're limited to only using the outputs. 
And one more thing about the kit effects, you can turn these on or off per pad. So for example, if I wanted only my snare to have kit effects on it, I would go into voices, I would hit my snare, that brings up my snare head here, and then now I can go into FX slash MIDI and I can turn these on. Now if I didn't want this on my toms, I hit the toms, those are all turned off right now, but you can turn the kit effects on or off for every individual part of the kit, which gives you a little bit more freedom if you, again, are limited to using your line outputs. The last thing to set up for recording in the strike module is really comes down to a personal preference. So this is panning the actual drum kit itself. So the Big Bird kit was a new kit that they added with firmware 1.5 and they already set up panning of the toms. So if you go into voice, you can see that tom one head is panned a little bit to the left, tom two a little bit to the right, tom three again a little bit to the right, and tom four further off to the right. So what I like to do is to do this backwards. So this is from the perspective of the drummer. I like to set my panning based on the perspective of the listener, so I will do the opposite. So my tom four, I would actually pan further to the left. So it's from the audience's perspective. So this is really a personal preference and this gives you more freedom with your cymbals and toms if you're using your individual outputs because remember those are all recorded to the same stereo track. So if you had all of your toms panned up the middle for example and you wanted to do a fill where you're going around the entire kit, you'd have to use automation and adjust the panning on the fly. Now that's not too bad because you are getting a completely clean audio signal. You don't have to worry about any bleed or any kind of weird phasey things, but uh, just something to look out for when you are setting up your module. Okay, so I'll show you three ways to set up your DAW and that depends on how many inputs your audio interface has. So I'm gonna show an example where you might have a two input audio interface, so you'd be using the line outs from the Strike Pro. Um, if you have four channels of input, you could use a combination of the line outs plus two individual outs, but I'll get started with using an audio interface with eight inputs. So the Strike Pro has eight outputs on the back, individual outputs, and you'll get the kick, snare, hi-hat, and ride on individual tracks in mono, and you'll get the toms in a stereo pair to one track and the cymbals to a stereo pair on one track as well. So let's just take a listen to this track. This is a new track that we're working on for an upcoming EP. So one trick I like to do when I'm using the individual outputs is instead of buying more cymbals and buying this type of splitter cable to get more sounds, I'll just reprogram the rims for the toms to be other percussion items. So this one, there are uh, there's a splash and a stacker that I have, so you can hear it in a couple of these fills. So there's the first one. And then I have another stacker here. So the one thing that the strike does not have is internal routing. So if you do do that, you need to actually paste the cymbal hits from the tom track into another track. So it just thinks it's another uh, part of the tom. So all of the Alesis Strike Pro pads are dual zone, so you can set a sound for the main head and also for the rim. So I'll set the rim for different uh, percussion sounds, and then you just have to go and identify whichever one. So those are toms, that's another splash, and then just go ahead and just cut this out and then paste it on to a new track. So that can get you a bit of extra flexibility without having to spend any more money on splitter cables or additional pads or cymbal pads. So with the individual outputs, another thing to consider is using a feature in Logic called groups. So depending on the DAW that you're using, 
they may have a different concept for this, but in logic at least, you can add these to a group. If I call this group drums, I can now control certain parameters for all of those tracks at the same time. So that's important when it comes to editing. So if you have to do any editing with the track, you can lock these in place if you're going to be doing any quantization or any alignment, which obviously that's evil, get the performance right. But there's always gonna be cases where you have to make some fixes. Now for electronic drums, it's not that big of a deal. I could say, you know, I'm playing all eighth notes on this particular track. So I could quantize the hi-hat just by itself. It wouldn't cause any phase problems with acoustic drums. It would cause a problem because obviously you're gonna have hi-hat bleed in your snare mic, your overheads, if you have any other close mics set up. So grouping these things together and locking the editing in, if I go in and try to move, say, you know, if there's a miss hit on one of the snares and I wanna move that, you can see it's adjusting the other track already to keep those things aligned. Otherwise you can get into a real editing nightmare. So I'll undo that because I don't wanna do that. And uh, other than that, this is where you get the most freedom, but also I have all of the individual drum parts going to a summing track. So that's just a drum bus in Logic. These are called track stacks. So you would select your tracks and you would create a track stack. And then that basically sets the output of all those individual tracks to a summing track and then you can do additional bus processing. But as far as the uh, individual outputs, that's really all you need to set up. Just make sure that when you're setting up your inputs, you've got you know, input one, two, three, and four are mono for the individual outputs for kick, snare, hi-hat, and ride. And then the stereo symbol here shows that the toms are coming in in stereo through inputs five and six, and then input seven and eight for the symbols and um, it doesn't really matter for the additional uh, track I set up here for the splashes and the china. So set those audio inputs. Um, another important thing with your audio interface, which my Scarlett has, is it has a pad function, so it will do a up to 16 dB gain reduction, so you won't get any clipping. I did another video on input processing, so take a look at that video if you want to use input processing with your DAW. Okay, so moving on to a four track setup. So if you have an audio interface that only has four inputs, then you would probably be using the two line outs and probably the kick and snare, but really mix it up however you want. So for this example, I've used the line outputs on these two tracks and the kick and snare on the other two tracks. So I used to record this way when I had two two channel interfaces. So I had a Steinberg, um, MK2 something or other that had two inputs and uh, I actually still have this, my Roland Duo Capture EX that uh, doesn't actually work with the newest version of Mac OS, which is a bit of a bummer, but it had two inputs as well. So what I would do is I would plug in the line outputs into the Roland and I would plug in the individual outputs for the kick and snare into the Steinberg, create an aggregate device on the Mac and then boom, I can get four channels there. So when you're setting it up this way, the things to consider is you have to have most of the kit balanced for whatever you're sending through the line outs. So that means your faders need to be set up for the proper mix in advance. And whatever two options you're using as far as outputting the individual outputs, set the faders down to zero. So none of that audio is processed. What I did with this example is I left the snare on for the line outs just so you could hear how you could get some additional effects. So depending on the music style that you're doing, or if you wanted to simulate, say, a bottom snare microphone, or you wanted to have a little bit of extra subtle reverb in the background, you could put the fader of that snare up a little bit, turn the kit effects on it, that will get recorded onto the line outs, but you still have the raw snare sample on another track that gives you more freedom with your mix. So the one challenge you might run into with this, and I've already dealt with this through these two gain plugins here, is weird kind of phasey sounds because you do have the exact same snare hit on your individual snare track plus your line out track. So if I turn both of these off, you're gonna hear the snare with a weird kind of phasey flangey type of sound. 
so with that phase inversion turned off, you can hear a little bit more of that delay on the snare that I'm piping through the line out. So the way that you deal with that is any plugin that you have that has the ability to invert the phase, you would have to do that. Otherwise, uh, if the waveforms are exact on your snare track and your line out track, they'll cancel each other out or you'll get a weird kind of phasing sound. So if you get any strange noise, if you do have four channels and you're recording this way, then that's something you can do. Um, I usually use the built-in Logic Gain plugin. I don't change anything with the gain or the balance. I literally just flip the phase and listen to it until it sounds good. But that's one thing to look out for if you only have four channels of input. Okay, the last one to show you is the simplest one, and this is where you might have an interface that only has two inputs. So you're gonna have to get the module set up exactly how you want it. So any panning you wanna have with your drums, you'll have to do that on the module. The faders on the front of the module, you're gonna have to set up to get a drum mix, more or less exactly what you want because you're really gonna be limited to, I guess what you would call bus processing. So you would just be processing all of the drums at once. Now. Given that it is electronic drums, you notice that you're still getting a really clean signal. So theoretically, if you have a simple drum part and you have only two inputs on your audio interface, you could copy and paste some of these things into multiple tracks. And I did this once on one track. So uh, one of the first tracks that's on our first record when I was doing some of the pre-production and I didn't have the ability to record acoustic drums at home. I used the strike and I had a fill that I wanted to have kind of pan from left to right. And you only get the ability really to EQ everything all at once. So, you know, the eight inch and the 10 inch tom sound great. The floor tom sounds like garbage. So I thought, well, I could really zoom in here and any of the drum parts. So if you look at this crescendo on the intro here, this is just simple uh, floor tom being hit in a crescendo. You could go in here, you could zoom in really tight and you could copy and paste each of these into separate tracks if you really, really needed to. So the reason why I'm mentioning this is if you do have a strike kit and you don't have an audio interface that has four inputs or eight or more, you don't have to rush out and buy one. There are some workarounds that really suck from a workflow perspective, but if you're just getting started um, and budget is tight, the most important thing is learning how to mix drums. So maybe you could try that option, although you'd probably pull your hair out. Um, and with this uh, awesome COVID hair that I'm rocking right now, I wouldn't want to pull all of my hair out right now. So when you are just recording with two channels, remember it's most important to make sure you have the module set up exactly how you want it because all you're really going to be able to do is process that entire signal. All right, so to wrap up, when you're recording audio with the Strike Pro, your audio interface really is going to determine what your strategy is. So if, again, if you only have two inputs, make sure you spend the extra time getting your module set up with all of your pans, all of the types of kit effects that you want. If you do have four inputs available on your audio interface, you get a little bit more freedom. So now depending on the song, you know, maybe you're using the Spark for just percussion. So you could have most of your percussion elements on your left and right out. And then maybe you have a conga and, you know, something else that's your primary instrument on your individual outs. But really, if you do have the ability to uh, rent an interface even that has eight inputs, you get the most flexibility with uh, recording with the Strike Pro. So again, remember that the line outs will only process the kit effects and the volume levels that you have set on the fader and the individual outputs won't do that. So on the next video, I'm gonna go deeper into MIDI recording and then possibly some combinations with both. So you can get some interesting results if you record your audio and your MIDI at the same time, but I'll save that for another video and I'll save getting into the details about mixing electronic drums in another video as well. So I hope this redeemed that other video that I did a couple of years ago, and I hope this gave you a little bit more information to help you get started and make the most out of your home recording with your Elisa Strike Pro. Remember to like and subscribe, and then you'll get notified when that MIDI video comes out. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.